In 2012 was the fight with, was English title with Kieran Farrell. Yeah. How's that yeah. for a boxer when, if you end somebody's career in it the ring, was, how does that affect that you? That was the darkest moment in my career that, you know, James. Yeah. Like I said, I mentioned, you know, losing for the first time. I lost fights after that as well. And I lost, you know, with, with that, so obviously for anyone who don't know, we had, you know, we had a great fight for an English title. It was on a non-TV show. And listen, I had, I had a job ready to start Monday because I wouldn't have been able to be, it would have lost that. There's no way I could have been a full-time pro. So I would have had a job. My mate had a security company and he gave me a job in the offices. And it was sort of a bit brutal as in where you lose on Friday, mate. The job's there for you Monday and you start. He said, yeah, you're still trained, but you won't be able to be a full-time pro. And it was off TV, it was online and, it was in a cold, it was a warehouse called The Bowlers. They have a lot of raves there now and stuff like that, but it was a cold, cold um, night. And in there, it was, do you know what I mean? You could see your own breath. It was freezing in there. And the real sort of bare pit atmosphere, you know, came in a bit of a Manchester dive. You came just outside in a place called Haywood. And I think the crime rate must have been zero there because I think half of Haywood had turned <laughs> up that night. And obviously, I did, we had a rowdy crowd and... Um, Anyway, we boxed and we had we had a great fight and I come through it, one on points and just after the final bell, seconds after, Kieran collapsed and I was a bit like, wow, I, this was before a decision had been given or anything like that. You know, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, I'm seeing, and the next thing I'm seeing a stretcher come in the ring and the next thing I'm seeing he's on oxygen and I'm like, I know the brutal side of boxing, but this was, I was experiencing it for real for the first time. And yeah, James, it was, I don't want to say the darkest moment of career, probably the darkest moment of my life, really, mm. do you know? And um, there's an image that never leaves me. And I remember him getting stretched out the ring and I'm just looking like, what, what's going on? And I remember his mum, God bless her, she's holding on to his hand, she's holding on to her little son's hand and she's breaking her heart and he's, he's you know, he's unconscious. And I'm thinking, I don't want to do this no more. Do you know, like, it still lives with me. And for, anyway, do you know, thankfully, Kieran, he had a bleed on the brain, he could never box again. But he's ended up making a full recovery. I was actually with him yesterday. Um, he trains fighters and stuff and he's made a full recovery now. He can never box again, but for months, it was just, it left me and my trainer said, he went, it took you a bit to get over that. He said, I watched, you just lost a little bit of devilment yeah. in the ring and you just wasn't the same fighter. And I couldn't see him for, I didn't see him for good. It sounds bad this because I'm not that kind of guy where I was thinking, should I go in? I remember after the fight, just being up all night and you're looking for updates and, so a lot of Chinese whispers in your ear and he takes a turn for the worst and stuff. And I'm just thinking, I just want this boy to pull through. Do you know, there can be rivalry before it and stuff. I just want this to come through. I just want him to come through. And, you know, thankfully he did, but I couldn't turn up to the hospital because I thought, I didn't know how his family was going to be or it just wasn't the time. And then I left it a bit of time and it just, it's one of them, you know, when you put things off and you keep putting it off and putting it off. And, and to be fair with Kieran, I've told him this and he says, do you know what? I'm glad you did. He said, because I probably needed that bit of cooling off period. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I remember one day and I said, oh, I dropped him a message and said, you know, I'd love to come and see the gym one time and all that. I didn't really want to, so I was just scared, but I just, mm -hmm. I knew it was the right thing to do. And he went, yeah, yeah. And then he said, I said, come up. Uh, I remember just getting in, <laughs> getting in the car, putting the post code in. I just turned my phone off thinking, I'm just going, I'm not looking mm -hmm. at anything on my phone till, till I get there or speaking to anyone, because otherwise I might turn around Anyway, I went in and with a minute or two, it was fine then. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was a little bit mm -hmm. awkward. We're good mates now. We're good mates. And um, all he ever wanted is like, you know, him to do well now and stuff like that. But yeah, when you see someone potentially nearly lose their life, you know, at your hands, it just, it did, it affected me in a big yeah. way. And I didn't, I love boxing. I love the training and stuff, but I thought, do I want to do this anymore? Yeah, that it's, shows you how brutal it is, though. But that shows you I've your character it. because you are such a good yeah, guy that no, it would, you would have lost that fire in the thank ring. Thank you, and I did. I didn't know I did until like I got told like after it, and then it come back. It come back, boy. It was um, it was horrible. Do you know, like I was scared with like I say, I can still see it there clear now. Just his mum holding his hand and she breaking Oof. her heart, and I thought could have been my mum that, and yeah. I know she would have been the same and. That sport, mate, it's, 
it's brutal. brutal. It yeah. is. I've seen it like just, I've seen that. I always say about boxing, I imagine about most sports, the highs are so high. Like, you know, I've had some of the best nights of my life, but the lows, and not even just me, like the lows, to, to get you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've seen friends and I've seen friends, partners upset and family members who, you know, with are heart broke. And I'm just like, Oh, it gets you, do you know what yeah. I mean? It gets you, and I'm like... Do you think if he died, you you would have quit boxing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have quit boxing. I wouldn't have... I couldn't have done it. I, I wouldn't have been able to stay in a boxing gym. I don't... I don't... It sounds dramatic, but I'd have always, like, say, worked with my amateur club and with the kids and stuff like that. I don't think I could have stopped in a boxing gym again. I think I would have had to move away from it altogether. Um, thankfully it didn't and it's mad like now obviously he trains his own fighters and stuff like that but yeah if if um, it would the worst would have happened I don't think I don't yeah. know, watch boxing again it's class that you're both now friends because he was yeah. 14 and 0 at the time he, yeah, was, he was coming through the he ranks was, he was coming through he was a good fighter and I believe that night he, he would have beat a lot of good fighters and it was just it's sad and maybe it's in you know it was in I was planned for him to go a different way and that's what he's doing yeah. now